Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 10. What's that I hear you saying? Red Dog, what about the fancy flying camera introduction thing that you've done for the last like 7,000 episodes? Nope, none of that today, my friends. In fact, for the next few episodes, we're going back to good old fashioned Let's Play Minecraft style videos where we're just hanging out together on the server doing bits and bobs all over the place. No fancy cuts, no fancy cinematography, just good old fashioned YouTube Minecrafting. And that's because I'm off to South Africa in a couple of days to go and visit my parents and see my brothers. And uh, the whole family is coming together for the first time in over a decade to celebrate my dad's birthday. And uh, yeah, this is the first time that we've all managed to get together after the pandemic. And it's going to be a really amazing time for the family. Um, and we'll all be under the same roof for the first time in what feels like forever. And so in preparation for that, I'm just going to make a whole bunch of videos back to back with minimal editing and stuff because if I spend too much time editing and making fancy fancy videos I will never get enough videos done for you guys. I want to make sure that I get a couple of videos out a week for you while I am away and uh, well we're starting this one here at the Wither Skeleton Farm. You might have noticed since the last time that we were up here um, that there's been some upgrades. Yes, I have added a further two spawning platforms to this thing, one above and one below which looks like it was probably quite easy to do, but it was actually a pain in the butt because I had to shift the entire thing down one block. But when I first did it, I built it one block up instead of one block down, which means I had to remake the thing three times in the end. But it is now working, and if we have a quick look at our statistics, we can see that the number of buttons that have been placed for this thing is approximately 56,000. And Iskal's been out here to help me a little bit sometimes too, and he's placed approximately 4,000. So we're at about 60,000 buttons placed for this, um, this Wither Skull Factory at the moment. And with that in mind, it is starting to really work very powerfully. Although I suspect that somebody is currently in the nether, which is affecting the spawn rates of the skeletons. But when there's nobody in the nether... This thing reigns with the skeletons like nobody's business. And, uh, well, here's a little bit of fancy technology, too. It is powdered snow so that the skeletons that are falling from the top layers uh, don't take any damage. And uh, we can sort of control the fall rate of the wither skellies as they get down here. But, yeah, this farm has been absolutely insane. I've been using it for not only XP, but also to get an insane amount of bones and an insane amount of coal and whatnot. And uh, yeah, later today, we're going to go and make a few more beacons also, because uh, we obviously had quite a lot of beacon sales last week in the, in the store. And I want to make sure that before I go back to South Africa, there are enough beacons in stock for my fellow hermits so that they can, uh, they can make sure that they can have access to their beaconators whenever they need them while I'm away. Oh, guys, I just had a great idea of what to do next in this episode. And... Yes, I, I have no idea what we're doing today. I'm literally just winging it. Wh whatever I feel like doing today, we're going to do in the episode. I've been sitting here killing these scalies, trying to figure out our next move. I think I figured it out. I've just been chilling, farming these wither scalies a little bit. 13 skulls so far. Very nice. But I just realized that I am slightly jealous of some of my fellow hermits, especially... Uh, People like Hypno and Azuma, because they've got such awesome gear. They've got netherite gear coming out of their ear holes right now, and they look so freaking cool. They've got all the trims and all that sweet jazz going. I want some of that action, man. So why don't we uh, spend a little bit of time finding ourselves some ancient debris? That sounds like a fun thing to do before I go on holiday, actually. Uh, yes, maybe we can pimp out some of our gear before we go. By the way, what is this? <laughs> Who is responsible? For whatever this is. Um, wow, night vision is wild up here, isn't it? I have no idea what this is. Looks super cool, super advanced. Yeah, this is something that I don't understand. Why is it so close to me, though? I mean, is it because of the arrow that points home? I guess it makes it kind of convenient to find your way back from out here. But nice to know we've got some sort of a redstone neighbor out here on the roof of the nether in the middle of nowhere. Very good. But yes, we need to follow our arrow all the way back. We're going to do some netherite farming. For this, we're going to need a bunch of beds and some blast protection. We're going to use some explosions for this. It's going to be a good time. Step one, visit to the shopping district to get some supplies for netherite hunting. 
we need a bunch of beds. One stack for a diamond, which is pretty good. So that's going to be a stack of beds and that's going to be another stack of beds. I, I think two stacks of beds probably gets us enough ancient debris to at least upgrade one or two things. So that's good. Right, next up we need the wood to make the beds to blow up the nether to get the netherite. So here to Loglands we come. And Azima has recently installed an absolutely insane bamboo machine, which looks like a sow, generates insane amounts of bamboo and automagically auto crafts all the bamboo into all the different things. It's completely nuts. And uh, yes, here we go, blocks of bamboo. We can take some of these and change these to the plank variety. And then from the plank variety, we can make our beds. And in order to make two stacks of beds, we're going to need, what, uh, six of these, like a so. So there we go. That is everything that we need to blow up the nether. Alrighty, after a bit of kerfuffling, we are about ready to go blow up the nether to find some netherite, everybody. These are our beds that we will use for explosions. And we've got a nice full set of our diamond gear here. I've just put blast protection onto the leggings too to help us with the explosion radius that we are going to be battling as we blast our way through the nether. And we're basically going to be bed tunneling through the nether to find netherite. If you've never seen this particular method before, it's very fun. It is a method that I very much enjoy using to find netherite. It might not be the best way to find netherite, but in my opinion, it is the funnest way because it is quite an interactive um, adventure that you have to go on. Firstly, we got to find ourselves a nice bit of nether to farm. And then we just got to be a little bit smart with how we use the beds to basically blast huge tunnels through the nether. And uh, of course, we got to spot the netherite also to, uh, to, to dig it up. Um, fire protection potions goes a long way doing this, of course, making us immune to all of the fire. And as we're going to be using golden armor, uh, once again, golden armor being the best armor in the game, I'm sure I've explained this already. But yes, because we've got golden armor, we will not have to worry about any piglins getting upset with us. The only mob we really have to worry about is the big hoglin beasts, which can often spawn in your blast tunnels but we will cross that barrier when we get there. First things first, let's get back out to the Wither Skeleton Farm, which, as you can see, is quite far away. I'm not sure I've ever taken you guys on a full immersion journey from the hub to the Wither Farm, but there you go. You just experienced what I've got to do every day for a couple of times every day. Um, yes, so much goes on behind the scenes on the Hermitcraft server, guys. You'll never believe it. Um, but anyway, yes, we're back here now. I want to come to this area here so that we can collect some more provisions. Namely, I want to get our potion uh, box up and running. All right, that's looking good. Fully loaded up with noob juice and night vision. And now all we got to do is find a decent spot to do a bit of netherite farming. Going to take some chests with us too so that we can store some of the loot that we discover. Uh, namely some of the netherrack or any of the other things that we can find. Ideally, we want to find one of the quieter biomes to do this in, namely this biome over here, which only spawns um, endermen. However, it's quite difficult to stay within the biomes because we are essentially going to be digging all the way down toward the bottom of the nether before we even start mining. But this is a decent place to start. I tell you what, let's begin our mine right over here and we are going to go all the way down to I say uh, I don't know about a level 10 or so um, for old times sake let's go to level 11 right <laughs> where we used to be able to find diamonds in Minecraft back before uh, the deep slate days okay here we go level 11 acquired let's just dig ourselves a little workstation over here where we can set up the chests and I guess we'll just go in this direction to start the very first tunnel. Oh, you know what I didn't bring is a crafting table. We need a crafting table to make the beds, obviously. Uh, so that's kind of derpy, but that's fine. Also, we want to make sure we have as little in the inventory as possible so that we can carry as many beds as possible so that we can mine for as long as possible. Um, just trying to maximize on uh, efficiency out here, right? The less time we can spend doing this, the quicker I can get this episode done <laughs> and start working on the next one uh, for while my holidays are away at or something. Wow, English can even work brain. All right, awesome. Almost maximum beds acquired over here. Uh, it's fine. We'll just make more as we need them. And uh, welcome to Netherite Mining 101 the Rendog way. Uh, probably not the correct way, but certainly the fun way. So we place the bed, we right click the bed, and that's going to do a big ol' blast of the nether. And if you want to 
make sure you don't take like maximum damage from this. You can also do do it like this, right? And as you can see, we didn't really take that much damage from that, which is great. And generally speaking, actually, I like to have uh, a block of or, or a, a stack of blocks in my inventory so that we can uh, do this sort of thing, right? We can fill up lava holes when we make them. And most importantly, we can make a bridge across the TNT blast that we made. Oh my goodness, the first explosion? I didn't even notice that. I was so focused on making my little bridge. Didn't even spot that our very first explosion was Ancient Debris. I mean, don't mind if I do. That is uh, absolutely epic. A couple of cinnamon buns right off the, the bat there. That bodes well for this little session here, friends. It looks like we're going to be able to uh, hopefully upgrade some of our tools today. But there we go. I like to uh, right-click the bed and then back off as I'm right-clicking just to minimize some of that blast damage. And yeah, the, the, the uh, golden armor is actually taking quite a bit of damage. I think there is a way that we can negate this, though. Take a look at this. If we reach into our Giga Box and get our fortune pickaxe out, uh, which is over here... What we could do to repair the armor is every now and then just go and mine some quartz. Probably just a couple of blocks. Yeah, that'll fully repair the armor like that, right? So not too worried about the diamond armor, actually, uh, or the golden armor taking too much damage out here. We can just negate it with some XP from the quartz. Um, so yeah, awesome. I mean, this is going way better than expected already. Although, this is probably one of those things where we get nether... Oh, I was about to say. We get ancient debris the first time and then not again for another hour. But looky, looky. We be cooking with gas out here today, my friends. Another cinnamon bun available. Do we have a, a pear down here, potentially? New. No, just a single cinnamon bun. Absolutely awesome. Oh, this is so awesome. Uh, but kind of interested... Oh, we got the advancement at last. Here we go, we got hidden in the depths. Obtain ancient debris. Wait, did I not obtain the ancient debris in the first chamber? Wait a minute. Oh, I think the inventory was full, wasn't it? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, good. We got it. <laughs> three ancient debris so far and counting. Uh, what's that? Three blast holes for three ancient debris. So far averaging one ancient debris per blast hole, which I would say is a, a fairly decent average so far. <laughs> Keralis is proud of us. I oh, know, we're doing some professional business down here today, my friends. Um, yes, I have done this quite a few times over the course of the last few Hermitcraft seasons, so it's certainly not a method that I am um, not familiar with, so to speak. And I've spent many, many hours, in fact, streaming this because uh, it's quite satisfying just blasting your way through the nether nice and quietly. And, uh, you know, when you, you're, you're properly prepared with the armor and the potions that you need to survive, this is a fairly relaxing and, dare I say it, therapeutic task because of the repetitive nature of it, right? And the fact that every now and then you are rewarded with a very rare item. I don't know, this combination just makes your brain feel really happy. You're, you're somehow surviving a situation that you probably shouldn't. And at the same time, every now and then, you're receiving a very tasty reward for your efforts. And, uh, well, every now and then this sort of thing happens, which is reasonably annoying, but I find the best thing to do is just try and plug those holes if you can and uh, get rid of that lava, because sometimes this lava will cover, cover up the nether, uh, the ancient debris too. And uh, you might miss some ancient debris on the, the, the bottom of the blast chamber. Uh, but yes, as you can see, it's, you know, it's very... Um, it's basically just a gamble every time you blow up a bit. You have no idea what you're going to find in the next chamber. And sometimes we will start a mining session with three ancient debris right off the bat. And other times we will do this for 40 minutes before we find another ancient debris. That is just the RNG of the Minecraft gods out here. Speaking of which, let's have a look at our, our golden armor. And that's one... Okay, didn't notice I almost lost track of my health situation. I've been so engrossed in this task that I was not checking on health and yeah almost died there uh, i should i should probably be paying a little bit more attention to uh, the health situation also let's make sure that we are repairing the golden armor by the way if you are doing this without golden armor so say you're down here with diamond armor you know you'd have to worry about these fellas spawning and uh, ruining your day every now and then but because you're wearing the gold no need to stress about the piglins which is always lovely uh, right, any ancient debris that I've missed. Guys, if you spot an ancient debris that I've missed, please do shout at me in the comments so that I can come and collect it a little bit later on. 
And uh, maybe I should be trying to take less direct explosion damage here where possible. Oh, that is also lack of fire resistance potion has just kicked in. So uh, yeah, back to the chests to get some more ju noob juice going. And I guess I'm just going to settle in for, um, I don't know, maybe I'll go live on Twitch now and do this for the next couple of hours, guys. So yeah, I'm going to stream this for a bit and we will catch you on the other side with hopefully a whole bunch of ancient debris. It's the next day in real life, everybody. And one live stream later, we've got everything that we need to get netherite trim onto our beautiful golden armor. Uh -huh. We're going to be using a rib armor trim, which we found in a nether fortress during a live stream last month, and the spire armor trim, which I found when going end busting with Iskull, which is absolutely amazing. Plus, yesterday on live stream, we managed to yoink 28 ancient debris, which we now have to smelt into uh, the other version of it. Can't quite remember what it is. Um... <laughs> It's like ancient debris shards or whatever, and we will then use that with the gold to make the netherite ingots, and then we can make our trim. All right, 28 netherite scrap now smelted, and if I remember this correctly, we make the netherite ingots like this, which is great. Now, we need to make a couple of copies of this smithing template, because we're going to be using three of these. I need another batch of copies here. So, uh, three spire armor trims and one rib armor trim, although I want to make a copy of the rib armor trim so that we have one spare. So let's make a copy of that. And I think we're doing it. There we go. So I have decided that the helmet is going to be uh, spire, the chest is going to be rib, and the legs and the boots are going to be spire. I think that's going to give us the best configuration of this. So helmet goes in with the netherite ingot. And there we go, Spire Armor Trim has been applied. Oh, we also get the advancement, which is fun. Uh, we're going to put rib on the chest, so let's do the legs next and the boots. That's all of the Spire done, and now we just have to do the chest plate. There we go. And that, my friends, should be our netherite trimmed golden armor completed. And it looks a little something like this. Very nice. I mean, I look a little bit like that... Uh, B transformer, I suppose. But I kind of like this combination because it feels to me the most like a, a space suit or something, right? Especially because these trims have these like straight lines on the helmet and then these straight lines on the chest plate. And then, I don't know, it kind of looks like wiring or something. And then the boots look kind of like space boots if you uh, use your imagination a little bit. I think that's as close as we're going to get with the trims that we've got to uh, some sort of a Gigacorp spacesuit. So, um, yeah, fully pimped out, <laughs> netherite trimmed golden armor complete. I have no idea whether this was a good use of time, but uh, there you go. Our golden armor is now nether pimped uh, or something. <laughs> Ah yes, almost forgot to mention the most important thing about this episode, the Terra-M1 mud factory. Yes, my friends, I got very heavily distracted by trims yesterday. So much so that it consumed the entire day and I have not yet shown you the awesomeness that is the mud factory we started in the previous episode. It is pretty much done, or at least the exterior of it has been done. I still want to uh, tweak the interior a little bit, but look how cool this thing is chilling on the edge of our alien biome, smoke billowing into the poisonous atmosphere as bricks of pure mud are being churned forth from inside of the factory. Absolutely epic. I also installed another door for us, which is great. All of the farming for the wither skeleton skulls and uh, killing the withers has given me a bunch more projectile wither heads. So we now have another working door which is amazing, and that brings us into the work area. I want to work on the interior a little bit, of course. It's looking a little bit dull and uh, boring in here, but the factory is working perfectly. And, uh, well, as you guys saw last time, all we have to do is AFK in this spot, hold the right mouse button down, and mud will be generated and uh, pushed up into the system here. There it is, there it's going. And when it gets up to the very top, tippity top, it's going to get shoved over and the brick of mud or... What I'm starting to believe is more like a muddy chocolate bar, I suppose, is uh, being created out here. And then, of course, we're going to manually come out here with the shovel, just like any Gigacorp industrial factory worker 
Uh, we shall come out into the atmosphere with our spacesuit on to harvest away at the brick of mud that we have created. And um, yeah, this is pretty sweet. Oh, by the way, I added a little feature to the factory design that was not in the original design. I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting out here on the work platform, and I added a very snazzy little M1 to the mud generation platform, which I think looks super, super cool. Have a look at this. Let's just get the Giga Bug out. There we go. So the factory, uh, M1, the Terra Dash M1 has been completed. I mean, obviously, we need to do a lot of work on the terraforming around the place. Also, night is uh, quickly approaching, and this planet gets very hostile when the sun goes down for some reason. But uh, yes, as you can see, the factory's done all the nice and bits and bobs and the flags and the smoke and the, the pillars and the pipes and all of that jazz has been added. It's looking really, really cool. And I absolutely love it. But yes, indeed, folks, as far as the uh, Terra Dash M1 project is, is concerned, it is done, aside from a few uh, tweaks to the interior. And yes, as you can see, look at this this planet. It is super scary out there at night, guys, honestly. Got to keep inside of your gigahertz at all costs or you will perish. Uh, but yes, the, the, the factory is done. And this means we can continue the terraforming of our alien planet in this direction. We have a whole bunch more terraforming to do here, over to the other side of the river, and potentially over the top here also. And uh, certainly a little bit more around here too. So we need all of that mud. It's going to do great when I get back from South Africa, and we've got a little bit of time to do some more terraforming. But guys, that's going to do it, I think, for this episode. I need to get this thing edited, and I still have... Uh, another three or four pre-recorded episodes to make for you guys. So I'm going to get cracking on those today also. My goodness, look look at the mess over there. <laughs> this planet is not safe, man. We need to do something about this. We need to add some giga lights around here or something. Oh, geez. Anyway, thanks for watching, friends. And uh, we will smell you all in the next episode or the next pre-recorded episode. And I do thank you for watching these episodes while I'm away too, giving me some support while I'm chilling with my family. I do appreciate it, friends. So uh, we will see you back again in the hot seat, so to speak, in about four weeks' time. In the meantime, look after yourself, friends. And um, yeah, Brenda Gididaug is signing out until I'm back from South Africa. Bye, guys.